Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Tan and welcome to Providence Money Wisdom, an original podcast inspired by my book Money Wisdom, Simple Truths for Financial Wellness. In this podcast, I'll be sharing simple financial truths to guide you in navigating through the minefields of misinformation and false promises in order to achieve financial security and peace of mind. Fee-only wealth advisory practice. This episode is based on an article that I wrote many years ago for the Business Times. It was subsequently published in one of the chapters for my book, Money Wisdom. Although the article has been written many years ago, I believe that the thinking behind why Provident decided to go fee-only remains relevant today. On 26th of March 2012, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS, announced that they would be reviewing the financial advisory industry in a big way. Thereafter, there was an onslaught of feedback from the industry, ranging from agents to CEOs of insurance and financial advisory companies and associations' presidents, airing their views on why removing commission from advice was not the best way for the industry. As the first and probably so fee-only comprehensive wealth advisory firm in Singapore, perhaps we would be the best people to share our experiences in running a fee-for-service practice. So, why did we decide to go fee-only? Well, many years ago, a client requested that we give her some indication on how much it would cost if she chose to buy two insurance endowments to plan for her children's education. Based on her requirements, the annual premium outlay would be about $35,000. As a professional, I told her that I would like to explore with her other lower-cost options to help her achieve the goals. I shared with her why using endowments or, for that matter, insurance might not be the most cost-efficient way. Honestly, if I was still a commission-based salesperson, I would have struggled. I would be paid lower commission based on the proposed cost-effective alternative. Some self-focused questions would also be rushing through my head. What would my manager say of me? Why should I do it if my company and the industry recognize me by sales commissions and not by advice? What incentives will I miss out if I don't make my sales target? Besides, everyone is selling endowments. It can't be that bad. Yes, I might just yield to the temptation of the lucrative commission that I will earn the recognition that I will get and the incentives that I will receive and sell her the plans. I may further rationalize that I'm giving the client what she wants and so I am above board. When I rationalize long enough in an environment where everyone is doing so, I will lose my ability to discern and stray from my moral compass. Some salespeople have written to say that they are never and will never be driven by commissions and have argued that ultimately the ethics and integrity of the advisor are key factors in preventing all potential conflict of interest. Indeed, having integrity is a given in this profession. But we also recognize that we are mere mortals and can be tempted and fall. As a fee-only practice, clients pay us a pre-agreed fee for advice and all commissions arising from products are returned to the clients. In this way, not only clients can be assured of independent advice, we can also make sure that all of our client advisors would never be put in a precarious situation where he has to struggle or rationalize his decision. This was why we went fee-only. So, are we ready for fee-only? Are Singaporeans ready to pay a fee? When we first started our fee-only practice almost two decades ago, the financial advisory industry thought we were too ahead of our time. CEOs of many financial advisory firms said that Singaporeans were not ready to pay a fee for advice. 
Today, they are still saying the same thing. So, when will Singaporeans ever be ready? Having done fee work for clients from all walks of life, not just the ultra-high net worth, I know that Singaporeans have always been ready. The clients are willing to pay a fee as long as we can convince them that it is actually more cost-efficient to do so and that the advice we give are of global standard. As I read the concerns shared by CEOs of various financial advisory firms and insurance companies, I get a sense that they are more worried that their agents and companies may not survive in a fee-only environment. And so, in reality, it is the advisory industry that is not ready. But what are the difficulties in running a fee-only practice? It is true that running a fee-only practice is a lot tougher. Well, it's definitely a lot tougher than a commission-based financial advisory agency. But our years of experience tell us that they are not insurmountable. Well, firstly, recruiting advisors can be a challenge. To run a professional practice, we need to recruit advisors who are academically qualified, technically competent, and possess the ability to communicate. Advisors of such caliber, well, they are a rare breed. Furthermore, it is tough to compete against an industry that promises big compensation fast. We need people who are prepared to think big and also dig deep to build a sustainable and profitable business. Today, we have fine-tuned our compensation model to achieve that. It is a myth that fee-only advisors cannot earn a good living. In fact, we can and in a more sustainable way. But it comes gradually as we gain experience and depth in our practice, just like any professional firm. Secondly, the challenge is in a different culture, or rather in the different culture of a professional service firm. As the sole fee-only firm in Singapore, from time to time, we may have to speak to existing advisors who are in the industry and they are commission-based. There is a need to transform them from salespeople to professional advisors. Over the years, we have transformed the entire firm to think like a professional services firm and not a sales organization. This, I think, is one of the biggest challenges that existing firms will have to contend with if they want to move into fee-only. Third, the challenge is really in the infrastructure. As a fee firm, there is a need to set up a platform to rebate commissions and manage the fee income. We need to institutionalize the advisory process to make sure that if a client walks into our firm and tells different client advisors his needs, he will walk out with exactly the same recommendations. We have to work out how to price our fee fairly and show clients why paying us a fee is better for them. These are the growing pains that firms will have to be prepared to go through if they want to go fee-only. So, should we go fee-only? Should an advisory firm go fee-only? I think we have to ask ourselves what kind of financial advisory industry we want to create. Is it an advisory industry or a sales one? If it is the former we need to take the bold step to make the change. Having said so, I regret to say that it is not practical to make this change overnight. This is because the industry is not ready. Some may lose their jobs. Many may face financial difficulties. I regret it because it is for the benefit of the advisors that the status quo remains, not really for our clients. When I was much younger, I worked for Johnson & Johnson, a Fortune 500 company. Each year, the company would instill in us the belief system of j, j embedded in their credo. The credo starts with them being first responsible to their customers, doctors, nurses, patients, fathers and mothers. Their second responsibility is 
to their employees, and the third is to their communities. Their final responsibility is to their shareholders. They believe that if they operate based on these principles, their shareholders will get a fair return. Although I have long left Johnson and Johnson, their credo continues to inspire me. I believe that if we take care of our clients first, our employees, our client advisors, our shareholders will be taken care of. Thank you for tuning in to Providence Money Wisdom. I will be back soon with the next episode. For more information on my book or Providence services, kindly visit providence.com. I'll see you the next time. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.